at one point that um that every team in the NFL was in, or I'm sorry, not not every team. Remember when you said that the the Ravens were like the definition of inconsistent and then you went into like the the um was it it was either the Broncos or or a, a couple other teams that are like the definition of inconsistent. You know, I'm just convinced that every team is just on an inconsistent on an inconsistent yeah. thing. Well, like the know, Lions the go the out NFL. and beat the Cardinals. That's actually, yeah, I was just say I did want to talk about the Lions. In the, the same in the same season, how the hell did the Lions a like get steamrolled by the Bengals? And then in the in the next in the next like few weeks they're out here beating the team with the best record the in the NFL. The, worst. <clears throat> the Bengals they have Joe Burrow, you know, they well. and Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon. The the thing the really bad loss to me was was the Eagles. And the Eagles oh, yeah. are an awful team, but yeah. I don't think they're that good. I I mean I would no. have, I think every team would take Joe Burrow over Jalen Hurt. Oh, absolutely. Right? And it was just an, it was a dog shit week. We got steamrolled. But yeah, I mean that's the thing with the NFL. It's any given Sunday, right? You know, uh, you can any team can beat any team because the talent deficiency. While there is a talent deficiency, obviously between the Lions and a lot of other teams, it's not nearly as great as in like college, like a UTSA versus a Michigan. You know, right? Well, UTSA. Well, they. I no. mean. I was gonna say they 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 wouldn't beat Michigan, but UTSA is better than a lot of people think. But then they did go out well, and just, just say, or they like, threw a nugget to San Diego State and was like, "Here, have it. It's fine. Yeah. We don't so, care." Um, yeah. So talk about that. I mean, so if you're a Lions fan, because I saw a lot of discourse about this even nationally, and people were saying the Lions are fucking up their tank by winning this game and some people are like i don't even care the lines are fucking up their tank this is amazing to watch and nationally these are what people are saying not so not even fans of detroit they're just saying it's fun right but i'll say as someone who is a detroit fan the wind doesn't bother me right now um first of all i i do need to preface this I hate, 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 hate the narrative of the Lions are, you know, four field goals away from being second in the NFC North. It's like, yeah, and I was three lottery numbers away from being a millionaire, but ifs and buts and candy and nuts they ain't worth <laughs> shit. Okay. That's annoying. You're the the idea of like I they I do th are they are they probably better <clears throat> than the record indicates? I mean, yeah, maybe like, like with a, that same token, with that same token, like Michigan was a knee down away from an undefeated season, you know, like <clears throat> same, <laughs> yeah, same, same shit. Some even say that knee was never down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, but but no, y y you're right. Like if some butts aren't worth anything, you know, right. And so I hate, I'm like, like, if you want to say one field goal, especially the 67 yarder that Tucker hit. Okay. But four, you can't be like, oh, four things had to go our way and we would have been fine. Like, no, it's not how this works, especially because their bad coaching directly cost them some of those games. Like the Bears game, the double timeout incident, the not playing the sticks or letting them score a touchdown and letting them run the clock down and kick the field goal on Thanksgiving. Um, the Browns game, they were trying to give you that win and you coached yourself out of one. Same thing with the Steelers game. You had a backup quarterback <clears throat> and your play calling was God awful. And I don't know what Dan Campbell was thinking. Um, Sorry, that was, that but, was totally my bad. I totally uh, accidentally hit the wrong button. No, it's, it's all right. It's like, <laughs> So we, we got to stop with that because Dan Campbell definitely he, he coached himself out of some some wins this season. Like the Lions realistically could have been a five win team this year. Um, maybe even six with how things went. Um, but Dan Campbell coached themselves out of a few wins. Um, but now we're, we're at the point, right? I'm glad they won a game. They had to win a game. We needed a win. <clears throat> Yeah, because I, 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 I don't care. Oh, tank for the, go on to go winless and you know get the. It's different if you go winless and then then you blow everything up. 
but he's a first year head coach with a first year GM. It's really, really difficult to maintain buy in and convincing people that you're trying to build something when the foundation is 0 and 17. That's a really ugly mark to start with. Well, and so the fact that they avoided that is very good. The the weird part, it's my- weird that that people are talking about like the tank and like they're messing it up or whatever because like first off, like the Lions, I mean again, it's the NFL. Like you got to be bad to be bad. You know what I mean? Like like Jacksonville, like that is a unique situation. Like Jacksonville and Urban Meyer, like they thought that thing would go well, and then it never did. And it's just again, it's a unique situation. Like the the Jacksonville Jaguars are in an infinitely worse position than the than the Lions are. They're in an infinitely worse position than 99%. I think they have the worst position of like going forward being one of the worst teams and getting themselves out of the basement. Like they are in a bad spot. No. And no, I disagree. And, well 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 even even then though, like the Lions with the draft capital they have like the Lions like have like even if they get number 2, okay? Well, how many how many picks they got coming up? You know what I mean? Like it's not Four enough. Picks in the next 2 years in the first round alone plus an additional <coughs> I believe an additional third was the third this last year. I think they have the third this year is when um that comes in. It's just so much. Like they have so much um like Oh, and and let's not forget when you get some bad contracts off the book, Stafford's contract comes off the books and the cap increases, they're going to have a ton of money right. to play with. You right. Know, pay guys like, you know, Penny Sewell, DeAndre Swift, although I don't want them to pay a running back, you know, crazy money. Well, um, sign a free agent QB, depending on, you know, what's there. Trade for an asset. I, I'll tell you what. I wouldn't if if depending on what Miami wants, I would trade our second first round pick for Tua. I mean, yeah, I mean but you could they could trade point, for a QB. My point is, my point is, I don't think the roster is as bad as we thought it was. Well, and, and coaching the can improve that line, too, right? Like the def- defensive coordinator well, the and, the, and the stuff right, that they've Aaron come Glenn, up with. Aud- Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Pleasant deserve a ton of credit. They have made a practice squad secondary with, I mean, <clears throat> guys like Amani O'Rourke, who was a fifth round draft pick corner. Um, uh, you know, Kuda got hurt, so that that's your number one corner is Amani, who has had a great season. Um, he's like second and third in a lot of categories for corners. And he was, you know, a fifth, fourth round pick a couple years ago. You have Jerry Jacobs, whose season unfortunately ended, but he was an undrafted free agent, and he was having a stellar rookie season. Because and I and uh, same thing goes for AJ Parker. Like these are guys that like undrafted free agents or practice squad, and they have come in and done a fantastic job of <clears throat> getting the job done. And then we have. Uh, and Fanwu Melawanwu, I think is how you say his name. I believe he was our third or fourth round pick this last draft. He's a rookie. He's been in and made some plays. He's also been hurt throughout the season. So, like, the fact that this, and this is why I kind of have faith in Dan Campbell, because he did assemble this coaching staff. Him and Holmes assembled the coaching staff. And he got those guys to come and play for him. And the fact that we're getting such good play out of, you know, these corners who really, I mean, imagine if, you know, uh, by some miracle, Okuda comes back and plays well. I think he could eventually step up and, and be the guy. 